This is Curative Design, and I'm Ruin Matthews. Welcome back to the final episode in a series of essays that I've called The Reminder on My Wrist. In the second episode, we looked at the incredible story of how astronaut Jimmy Swigert's Omega Speedmaster may have saved the entire Apollo 13 crew from destruction, as well as the award that NASA bestowed upon Omega as a result. Sadly, this perfect record was about to be blemished, allowing the way for another manufacturer to enter into the storied lore of the Apollo moon missions. Let's get started. It is 1971. The Apollo 15 moon missions are underway. It is the fourth mission to land on the moon and the first one to use the lunar roving vehicle. Interestingly, the audio recording of the Apollo 15 launch would actually be included in the Sounds of the Earth recording that accompanied the Voyager 1 and 2 probes launched six years earlier in 1977. Commander David Scott had been issued the standard Omega Speedmaster Pro Watch for the mission, which performed well for the first two extravehicular activities or EVAs of the mission. On the third mission, the Hesalite crystal face of his watch failed and came off, rendering it non-functioning. Fortunately, Commander Scott had brought with him what NASA referred to as an unauthorized timepiece, namely the Belova pilot chronograph that he wore for the remainder of the mission. The Belova, despite not making the original NASA watch assessment cut, performed flawlessly, while the Omega unfortunately had failed. Despite not being named the official NASA watch, those Belova engineers and quality assurance people kept on doing what they do, day in and day out, not suspecting that one day an astronaut would be using one of their watches as a backup. Furthermore, the Belova watch cost one-tenth the price of an Omega, and in one fell swoop earned the street cred of being the watch that worked when the official watch didn't. I suppose my point in sharing this story is that we need to acknowledge that we have done and continue to do some amazing things in healthcare, from new treatments to technical breakthroughs and even process innovation, we continue to inch forward in terms of progress as a society. Still, we must fight daily to keep away the tendrils of complacency, as in my view, it was complacency that led to the mighty Omega Watch's failure during Apollo 15. What does that look like in healthcare? Well, it starts with the little things, unkind interactions with each other over the phone, in email, or even the chart, incomplete documentation, assuming a we-they stance, bristling in anger when a member of the team is brave enough to remind us to complete hand hygiene, perform a timeout, or consider another course of action during a code situation. This is how we slide into the depths of process failure, user error, and ultimately patient harm. In healthcare, we choose to do the things that are hard. It requires precision, accuracy, and the coordination of multiple teams of people. We use measurements to make abstract decisions about what is going on in the bodies of our patients and the power of empirical evidence to guide our management. When I look at my wrist, I'm reminded of the dangers of complacency and the notion of what a high value system is. While it is nice to receive awards and accolades, much like Omega did with the Silver Snoopy Award, that is not why we do the things that we do. I'm reminded that safety is a daily behavior and that we are all the chief safety officers of our immediate surroundings, whether it be at home, in the clinic, or in the hospital. Instead of ending on a picture of a watch, I wanted to end on this picture of the original Mercury 7 astronauts. Tools are important, and even what they symbolize can be important. However, hands down, I believe that people are more important. Teams of people coming together, living their values of respect, integrity, stewardship, excellence, collaboration, and kindness. This video is about recognizing those that came before us and understanding the work ahead of us. Thank you again. This is Curative Design, and I'm Arun Matthews.